uh, today's session. Um, we got three talks for you today. The program is a little shorter than yesterday because the, the second and the third talks will be 30 minutes. Um, as a reminder, you just heard us talk about the Q&A and so on. So I'd like, um, if you have questions of content, put those questions in the Q&A. Don't send them as a chat to the panelists. Um, the panelists will look at the Q&A questions and we'll bring it up during the talk or after the talk. And um, the panelists may also you know, ask Sergey a question during the talk. Um, anyhow, so that's the format. And um, you have the floor, Sergey, right now. OK, uh, thanks, Barbara. Uh, and uh, I will be talking about uh, classical algorithms for quantum uh, mean values. Uh, uh, I hope you can hear me and see the slides. Great. Uh, and uh, this is a joint work with uh, several people, um, David Gossett from uh, IQC, uh, uh, Alexander Klitsch and uh, Robert Kionik from uh, University of Munich, uh, my colleague uh, Ramis Movasak and uh, Eugen Tang from uh, Caltech. And so uh, uh, let me start with some uh, motivation. Uh, so uh, as you know, uh, quantum uh, many body systems are hard to simulate on a classical uh, computer. Uh, and this is primarily because uh, dimension of the Hilbert space grows exponentially as we increase uh, system size. Uh, but sometimes we can uh, avoid this exponential scaling uh, uh, using variational algorithms. And uh, these are algorithms that uh, minimize uh, expected value of certain Hamiltonian uh, over some class of variational states that depend on a small number of parameters, say polynomial in N. Uh, and uh, these days, many people are enthusiastic about uh, quantum variational algorithms, uh, such as uh, BQE. And uh, here we imagine that uh, variational states are defined uh, by a parameterized family of quantum circuits and uh, a quantum computer uh, is supposed to uh, execute a state preparation circuit, perform a measurement, and then uh, send, uh, uh, send measurement outcomes to uh, a classical computer, uh, which uh, estimates uh, the variational energy. Um, and we might have to repeat this uh, step many times to find uh, good uh, variational parameters that minimize the energy. Um, and there are promising ideas how to apply this method to uh, uh, quantum chemistry uh, or material science simulations, uh, as well as classical uh, optimization. Uh, uh, and I guess um, uh, the main uh, uh, selling point of uh, BQE is uh, uh, we don't need high fidelity quantum gates. Um, uh, in a certain sense, uh, uh, BQE no, is, uh, in a certain sense, uh, BQE is uh, robust against uh, systematic unitary errors, and there are ideas how to mitigate uh, random errors, uh, uh, such as depolarizing noise. And uh, given all this enthusiasm, I think it's important that uh, we clearly understand uh, limitations of this method. Uh, and uh, first, we have uh, hardware limitations. Uh, 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 quantum circuits that we can uh, implement reliably on near-term devices are likely to have small depth and uh, qubit connectivity is likely to be uh, limited. Uh, say we can only do, uh, uh, say, nearest neighbor gates on um, a two-dimensional uh, array of qubits. Uh, but uh, even uh, if we have uh, a fault-tolerant universal quantum computer, uh, we might have to worry about uh, algorithmic limitations. Uh, uh, so uh, somehow we have to minimize variational energy over uh, circuit parameters, uh, and this is a highly nonlinear optimization problem. Uh, and there are reasons to to believe that it's uh, generally non-tractable. Uh, uh, say if we use uh, gradient-based optimizers, then uh, uh, there could be a, a barren plateau effect. Then a gradient of the uh, uh, objective function becomes exponentially small. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the main question is whether quantum variational algorithms can, uh, uh, can beat classical algorithms uh, for some problem uh, in spite of uh, all these limitations. Uh, and uh, let me first talk about simulation of uh, quantum systems. 
uh, uh, say, uh, uh, we start from some Hamiltonian describing uh, a system of electrons. Uh, this could be a molecule with a fixed position of a nuclei. Uh, uh, and then uh, we express uh, the Hamiltonian in the second quantized uh, picture uh, by picking some set of orbitals. Uh, now each term in the Hamiltonian is uh, expressed in terms of uh, thermionic uh, creation annihilation operators. Uh, and then uh, we map it to uh, a qubit Hamiltonian, uh, for example, using uh, Jordan Wigner uh, transformation. Uh, now uh, each term in the final qubit Hamiltonian is a tensor product of single qubit Pauli operators uh, x, y, and z. Uh, and uh, uh, all these steps can be done efficiently on a, a classical computer. Uh, so uh, now comes uh, the quantum part of VQE. Uh, so uh, we prepare some variational state of psi uh, and measure expected value of, uh, of our Hamiltonian. Uh, and uh, by linearity, it suffices to measure expected value of uh, each individual uh, Pauli term. Um, and uh, for that, uh, we just need to measure each individual qubit in the eigenbasis of uh, Pauli x or y or z, uh, and then classically compute the product of uh, measured outcomes. Uh, uh, so the upshot is that uh, the only quantum part of uh, VQE algorithm is preparing variational state and uh, measuring uh, expected value of uh, some tensor product observable. Uh, and uh, what we try to do is to uh, uh, somehow isolate uh, this step and understand its uh, computational uh, complexity. Uh, and this leads to a, a quantum mean value problem uh, defined uh, here. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, so uh, we are given some uh, low def quantum circuit U uh, acting on n qubits and some uh, observable P. Uh, which is a uh, tensor product of single qubit observables. Uh, uh, this could be a Pauli operator, but uh, we don't have to be. Uh, and the problem is to approximate expected value of uh, this observable on the output state of U uh, with uh, some specified precision uh, epsilon. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the question is, uh, do we really need a quantum computer uh, to solve this problem? Uh, and uh, how well can we do uh, classically? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, this table shows uh, a runtime of a classical algorithm that solves a quantum mean value problem. Uh, the runtime depends on uh, circuit depth uh, and qubit connectivity. <clears throat> and here I only consider constant depth and connectivity is either two-dimensional or three-dimensional uh, layers. Uh, so in the 2D case, uh, our algorithm uh, has a runtime uh, linear in the number of qubits. And this is uh, uh, essentially optimal because we need linear time just uh, to uh, examine each gate in the circuit. Uh, and there is also inverse polynomial uh, dependence on precision uh, epsilon. Uh, and uh, for comparison, uh, the best previously known uh, uh, algorithm, which is a uh, uh, tensor network uh, contraction by Markov and Scheer, uh, has a runtime exponential in a square root of n. Uh, uh, but a, a tensor network contraction is essentially exact algorithm, <coughs> uh, so there is no dependence on epsilon. Uh, then uh, uh, in the three-dimensional case, uh, our algorithm has exponential runtime, uh, but exponent is uh, slightly better than uh, what you get from a uh, tensor network uh, contraction. Uh, uh, yeah, so the upshot is that uh, uh, if we hope to achieve a uh, quantum advantage, uh, then uh, uh, we, we should uh, somehow uh, improve qubit connectivity. It should be better than two-dimensional lattice or uh, we should improve circuit depth. Uh, so we need, uh, say, uh, uh, maybe logarithmic or linear circuit depth. Uh, and uh, uh, for general constant depth circuits that are, are not geometrically local, uh, our algorithm has a runtime exponential in a square root of n. Uh, but there is uh, one important uh, caveat uh, uh, we can only compute the uh, magnitude of uh, quantum mean value. Uh, 
Uh, so the mean value can be either positive or negative, but our algorithm cannot determine uh, the sign. Uh, Sergey, can I ask a, a brief question? So the dependence on the constant depths you are not giving here, right? You, you dependence on the depths you're not giving here, which will probably be pretty bad. Uh, yes, uh, dependence on the depth is re really bad. It's exponential in a uh, depth uh, squared. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so you're even paying. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Other questions? Actually, I have a question. So, uh, can't you add dummy variables so that um, you 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 boost the number by a certain amount, and then depending upon whether the answer was negative or positive, you know, you you see the change and know what the sign was. Uh, yes, you you can do something like a, a swap test to determine the sign. Uh, but then uh, the circuit depth becomes uh, 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 super constant. Uh, mm -hmm. So we, we don't know how to squeeze uh, swap test in co constant depth. Mm -hmm. Are there more questions at this point? Okay, continue, Sergey. Okay, yes. So let me sketch very briefly how the algorithm works uh, in the uh, simplest uh, case, which is constant depth uh, 2D. Uh, and uh, the idea is to express uh, a quantum mean value as an uh, inner product between uh, uh, quantum, two quantum states, uh, psi 1, psi 2, uh, that are uh, computationally tractable in a certain sense. Uh, and what I mean by that is that uh, uh, we can easily compute uh, amplitudes of psi 1, psi 2 in the standard basis and uh, we can uh, efficiently sample uh, probability distributions defined by uh, Psi 1 and Psi 2. And there is uh, uh, a very nice uh, uh, algorithm uh, proposed by Vanden Nest uh, that uh, approximates inner products between computationally tractable uh, states. Uh, uh, for example, uh, it is known that uh, matrix product states with a small bond dimension are, are computationally tractable uh, and this is true uh, uh, regardless of how we order uh, qubits. Uh, and I should emphasize that uh, uh, this uh, algorithm is uh, approximate one and uh, it achieves uh, a small uh, additive error. Uh, and uh, computing the inner product uh, exactly or uh, this a small multiplicative error is much more difficult problem. Uh, uh, which is uh, a sharp p hat, even if we talk about computationally tractable states. Uh, and uh, the, uh, 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 this algorithm is basically a Monte Carlo approach. Uh, so uh, you can express the inner product. Uh, uh, yeah, you can use this identity uh, uh, to express uh, the inner product as uh, mean value of a certain function f of x, uh, which is uh, efficiently computable uh, over certain probability distribution uh, p of x, uh, which is easier uh, to sample. <clears throat> uh, and uh, this function f of x can take very large values, uh, but uh, it happens that its uh, variance is uh, bounded by one. Uh, uh, and then uh, 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 what we can do is to uh, generate sufficiently many samples uh, from this distribution uh, p of x and uh, compute uh, the uh, empirical uh, mean value. Uh, and uh, uh, by Chebyshev inequality, uh, the approximation error scales like one over square root uh, of uh, the number of samples. So this is the idea of uh, Van der Nest uh, algorithm. Uh, and now uh, let's come back to uh, quantum mean values. Uh, so I can see the two-dimensional uh, lattice uh, each uh, side of the lattice is uh, a qubit, and uh, uh, our, uh, we have constant depth circuit U that uh, includes only uh, nearest neighbor uh, two qubit gates, uh, as shown uh, here. And uh, such circuits uh, have uh, certain uh, local features that we can exploit. Uh, for example, if we take uh, a single qubit observable acting uh, on some qubit J, and uh, we uh, conjugated uh, by, uh, by such circuit U, uh, we get some uh, local operator uh, which uh, has support in a, a light cone uh, of radius proportional to the circuit depth. Uh, 
So if depth is constant, uh, the light cone has constant uh, radius. Uh, and uh, 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 let me call this local operator uh, a dressed observable. Uh, so this is the formal uh, definition. Uh, and uh, the first step is to uh, compute uh, uh, this addressed observable for, for each qubit. Uh, uh, and this can be done efficiently because we can restrict the circuit onto a light cone and uh, a light cone has constant uh, size. Uh, so then uh, the quantum mean value can be expressed using uh, this equation. So we have uh, a product of all uh, dressed observables uh, and when we compute mean value with respect to O0 uh, state. And the order in this product does not matter because, uh, because the rest observables are pairwise commute. Uh, then uh, the second step uh, uh, doesn't really do anything. We just uh, coarse grain the lattice such that uh, uh, any dressed observable acts on uh, uh, a two by two block of sites in the uh, coarse grained uh, lattice. Uh, and uh, now each uh, site of the lattice is uh, uh, acuted uh, with uh, local dimension uh, capital D, uh, which is uh, exponential in the uh, circuit depth uh, squared. Uh, but if the circuit has constant depth, then uh, local dimension is uh, constant. Uh, yeah, so this is just uh, a summary of uh, what we have achieved so far. Uh, and then comes uh, the interesting uh, step. Uh, so I want to express the quantum mean value as uh, uh, the inner product between two uh, matrix product states. Uh, and uh, so this picture illustrates uh, how it works. Uh, so, uh, so we partition the lattice into uh, horizontal uh, strips uh, uh, and there will be two different partitions, uh, A and uh, partition B. And uh, then we define a state of Psi A uh, by taking uh, O0 state and then applying a product of uh, all dressed observables that are fully contained in uh, some strip uh, in the partition A. And so here I show some examples of uh, such observables. Uh, and then we define a state Psi B similarly using uh, uh, partition B. Uh, and uh, uh, the fact that uh, dressed observables pairwise commute uh, means uh, that uh, uh, Psi A and Psi B are uh, uh, matrix product states with a small bond dimension. Uh, uh, so it's like uh, uh, applying a constant depth one dimensional circuit with pairwise commuting uh, gates. Uh, and uh, such circuit cannot generate much uh, entanglement. So, so this bond dimension is, uh, well, if each side of the lattice is acuted with local dimension capital D, then uh, the bond dimension is at most uh, capital D squared, uh, which, which is uh, bounded by a constant. Uh, yes, uh, and then uh, basically uh, uh, by construction, this quantum mean value is uh, the inner product between uh, Psi A and Psi B. Uh, but there is uh, in the middle, we have some permutation of uh, uh, qubits. Uh, and we need this permutation because uh, uh, Psi A and uh, Psi B uh, are defined for two different uh, linear order of qubits. Uh, so to define a matrix product state, we must uh, choose some linear order of qubits. And here we, we using two different uh, orders. Uh, yes, and finally, uh, 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 we, uh, as I said, uh, matrix product states are computationally tractable uh, for any order of qubits. Uh, so we can uh, estimate the inner product by uh, Van der Nest algorithm. Uh, and uh, in the three-dimensional case, the algorithm is only slightly more complicated, but uh, I'm not going to discuss it. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, next uh, I want to talk about uh, something different, uh, and this is a uh, uh, quantum approximate uh, optimization algorithm uh, proposed by uh, Farhi, Goldstone, and Goodman. Uh, and here, uh, 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 the goal is to uh, uh, maximize uh, a classical cost function uh, that depends on n binary variables. Uh, and uh, for concreteness, let me talk about Ising type cost function. 
Uh, so we have some graph uh, G uh, with n vertices and uh, Ising uh, variables live at vertices of the graph and uh, we have uh, interactions between uh, nearest neighbor uh, variables. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, QAOA consists of uh, three steps. Uh, so first uh, we uh, uh, promote classical cost function to uh, a quantum Hamiltonian. Uh, so basically it has uh, uh, values of the cost function on the diagonal uh, and all of diagonal matrix elements are zero. Uh, then uh, we maximize expected energy of this Hamiltonian over a suitable uh, class of variational states uh, that depend on a few parameters. Uh, and uh, finally, we take the optimal variational state, uh, measure each qubit and obtain uh, a classical uh, uh, solution. Uh, and uh, uh, the mean value, uh, well, uh, uh, if you look at the mean value of uh, classical cost function on this solution, it coincides with uh, the uh, quantum mean value. Uh, and uh, uh, so Farhi et al. proposed uh, the following variational states. Uh, so we initialize each qubit in the plus state, uh, and then we apply a quantum circuit that alternates between uh, two types of layers. Uh, each a blue layer applies a uh, uh, unitary time evolution under the cost function uh, and uh, uh, cost function Hamiltonian, and each red layer uh, is unitary evolution under uh, a simple Hamiltonian, which is sum of single qubit X operators. So this is like transverse, transverse field operator. And uh, each layer comes with a uh, variational parameter, uh, gamma j or beta j, uh, which is the evolution time. Uh, and uh, 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 yeah, so, uh, uh, so we say that a variational state has a level p if uh, this quantum circuit contains uh, p blue layers and p uh, red layers. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, I guess the main motivation for this ansatz is adiabatic uh, quantum computation uh, that uh, slowly interpolates between uh, a cost function Hamiltonian and a transverse magnetic field Hamiltonian. Uh, so in the limit then the uh, level P is very large, uh, say polynomial in N, uh, QAOA can be uh, viewed as a trotterized version of adiabatic uh, quantum computation. Uh, but uh, there are reasons to keep uh, the level P uh, as small as possible. Uh, and this, uh, um, this comes from uh, uh, this algorithmic and hardware limitations that uh, I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, somehow we must be able to minimize uh, 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 variational energy over these parameters beta and gamma. And this is very hard optimization problem. Uh, and we must be able to implement this variational circuit uh, and the depth of this circuit is uh, roughly linear in the level P. So the question is, can a low level QAOA uh, uh, beat classical uh, optimization uh, algorithms for some problems? Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the answer is negative. Uh, it was shown by uh, Hastings that uh, um, uh, approximation ratio achieved by level one QAOA uh, is inferior to uh, what can be done with uh, classical, local classical uh, optimization uh, algorithms, uh, at least for uh, bounded degree graphs. Uh, and uh, in our paper, we showed that uh, uh, level P QAOA with any constant level P is uh, inferior to uh, 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 classical approximation algorithms based on uh, SDP uh, relaxations. Uh, and Sergei, can I ask you a question, Sergey? The QAOA here, you're not assuming any spatial locality, right? Uh, no. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, any other questions? Yeah, are there other questions? Yeah, uh, if I may, just one quick question. So for the lower bounds for the QOA and bound degree graphs, uh, the worst cases for QOA and GW are not going to be the same, right? So can there be a subclass of bound degree, degree graphs where, where QOA still beats GW? Uh, 
Yeah, I don't really know. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if one can find such examples, but I have not uh, tried to do that. Uh, yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, if you are interested, please come to uh, 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 a talk by uh, uh, Robert uh, later today, and uh, he will uh, describe this result in details. Uh, uh, and basically, uh, what we try to do is to uh, uh, try to overcome these limitations, uh, uh, and this is based on a, a new idea, which we call uh, variable uh, elimination. So uh, we, uh, what we are trying to do is to use uh, uh, QAOA as a, a subroutine in a, a classical optimization algorithm. Uh, so let me explain how it works. Uh, yeah, so first we, uh, uh, we run the standard uh, QAOA with some fixed level P. Uh, and uh, uh, again, I'm uh, considering Ising type uh, cost function. Uh, so when we find optimal parameters beta and gamma, uh, prepare optimal variational state and uh, compute with uh, quantum uh, mean values. Uh, so uh, for each pair of qubits, we compute mean values of Pauli ZZ observable. And uh, somehow it quantifies uh, correlations between variables. Uh, and then uh, we uh, identify a pair of variables which is uh, maximally correlated. Uh, uh, in the sense that uh, the magnitude of this uh, quantum mean value is uh, the maximum. Uh, and uh, mm, <clears throat> okay, so th there is a question uh, 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 related to this uh, uh, simulation of two dimensional uh, uh, constant depth circuits. Uh, uh, how general is the partition in, into two by two uh, blocks of sites? But Sergey, uh, you could also take this question afterwards if you want, if you're in the middle uh, of the flow. It's okay. Up to yeah, yeah, maybe it would be better. Maybe it's, yeah, it's even easier. Yes. Uh, so we, uh, we, we look at this maximally correlated pair of variables and we, uh, we impose a, a parity constraint. So if uh, uh, the variables are positively correlated, uh, uh, we, uh, imp we require that uh, B equals A. And if they are negatively correlated, we require that B equals uh, minus A. And then we examine each term in the cost function that includes uh, variable B and uh, replace it by plus minus A. Uh, so this way we obtain a new Ising type cost function uh, that depends only on uh, n minus one uh, variable. Uh, and then uh, the idea is to apply this uh, variable elimination uh, uh, many times, uh, such that at each step we eliminate one variable uh, and we stop then uh, the final problem is uh, so small that we can solve it by a uh, brute force. Uh, so let me illustrate this by an example. Uh, say suppose we start from Ising uh, model defined on a graph with uh, five vertices. Uh, we run standard QAOA. We find maximally correlated pair of variables, uh, say two and three. Uh, then uh, we impose parity constraint and eliminate uh, variable three. Uh, now we have a graph with only four vertices. Uh, we run standard QAOA, find maximally correlated pair. Uh, we eliminate uh, variable four. Uh, and now uh, we can solve uh, this uh, small instance by brute force and uh, assign a value plus minus one to each variable. Uh, and finally, we uh, assign a value to all variables that have been eliminated. Uh, and for that, we just uh, uh, we trace back uh, uh, parity constraints that uh, have been imposed. Uh, and uh, so here I show how this works uh, in practice. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm considering uh, Ising random bond Ising model defined on complete graphs with uh, 100 vertices. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, so this plot shows approximation ratios achieved by different algorithms. Uh, uh, the worst case, sorry, the best case is approximation ratio one, uh, the worst case is zero. 
uh, and you can see that uh, recursive uh, QAOA uh, 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 outperforms the standard QAOA. Uh, 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 and uh, for comparison, I also show performance of uh, uh, SDP relaxation algorithm. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the performance of uh, RQAOA is uh, uh, comparable to what we get from uh, SDP relaxation. Uh, which is essentially the best known classical uh, algorithm, or uh, uh, I should say th the best known uh, to us. Uh, so uh, the recursive QAOA uh, uh, looks, uh, uh, looks promising. Uh, and then, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, uh, we also looked at a, a different optimization problem, which is called uh, max free cut. And this is basically optimization version of uh, graph coloring, graph three coloring problem. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, now each vertex uh, 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 of a graph uh, uh, has a variable that, uh, 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 okay, we, we are trying to assign a color to each vertex of a graph. Uh, in this case, there are only three colors or uh, zero, one, two. Uh, and the cost function is uh, uh, the number of edges uh, that have uh, endpoints of different uh, colors. Uh, and uh, our goal is to uh, approximate uh, the maximum uh, of this cost function. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, for example, if we pick a uh, vertex coloring uh, at random, uh, we can achieve approximation ratio at least uh, uh, two thirds. Uh, and uh, the best known classical algorithm, uh, it's also based on SDP relaxation method, uh, achieves approximation ratio roughly 83%. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, one can uh, easily generalize uh, QAOA and uh, variable elimination method from uh, 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 qubits to uh, qubits. Uh, so basically, one just needs to replace uh, Pauli operators X and Z by uh, generalized uh, Pauli operators uh, acting on qubits. Uh, and so uh, we did numerical simulation of uh, level one uh, QAOA and its uh, recursive version for uh, 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 randomly generated uh, problem instances. Uh, so here we consider uh, graphs with 50 vertices uh, and uh, we have sort of a planted uh, solution such that uh, all these graphs are free colorable. So uh, the maximum cost function is just uh, the number of edges in the graph. Uh, and uh, so uh, again, uh, here uh, the plot shows comparison between uh, uh, standard uh, recursive uh, level one QAOA and uh, classical S SDP relaxation uh, method. Uh, uh, but this comparison is not quite uh, uh, fair because uh, in the case of SDP, we are talking about the worst case approximation ratio. And in the case of uh, RQAOA, uh, we talk about uh, uh, average case approximation ratio. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, you can see that uh, the recursive uh, uh, QAOA performs uh, quite well. Uh, okay. Can I ask a question? A bit just to, so how do you do these simulations? This is just, you classically simulate this, these algorithms, right? Okay, uh, actually, this is my next uh, slide. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, so uh, uh, the reason why we only looked at level one QAOA is because we know how to simulate it numerically for very large systems, like 100 qubits. Uh, but uh, this also means uh, uh, that there is no quantum uh, advantage. If we can simulate quantum algorithm classically, uh, it's not uh, very useful. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, uh, the only quantum step of RQAOA algorithm is computing uh, uh, these quantum mean values for uh, uh, Pauli ZZ observables. And there is, uh, uh, it happens that there is efficient you know, polynomial time classical algorithm that uh, computes uh, such uh, mean values. Uh, and it was proposed by uh, Van Cato in this paper. 
uh, and let me describe a slightly more general uh, version of this algorithm that works not only for qubits but uh, for qubits uh, of constant dimension. Uh, and uh, I will use uh, some pictorial notation. Uh, so this uh, red box uh, denotes uh, a single qubit uh, X rotation. Uh, so it just means some uh, unitary operator which is diagonal in the eigenbasis of uh, Pauli X. Uh, and this uh, uh, blue dashed line denotes uh, diagonal to qubit uh, to qubit gate. Uh, so then uh, uh, level one variational states uh, uh, have this form. Uh, so we initialize each qubit and plus, uh, apply a layer of uh, two qubit diagonal gates, uh, and then apply a layer of X rotations. Uh, and uh, the quantum, uh, uh, say we want to compute uh, mean value of some uh, two qubit observable, uh, which acts on qubit one and two. Uh, so, yeah, so basically we have to evaluate this uh, uh, quantum circuit. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so the first thing we can do is to cancel all gates that do not touch uh, qubit one and two because uh, such gate uh, come in uh, conjugate pairs. Uh, uh, so then uh, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can examine all gates acting only on QDIT1 and QDIT2 and uh, uh, apply all these gates to the observable. So uh, this gives some a modified observable or tilde uh, and we can efficiently compute uh, or tilde because uh, 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 basically, we just need to evaluate with a small subcircuit. Uh, and then, uh, uh, so I want to change the order of uh, two QDIT gates uh, uh, such that uh, QDIT one and two are sequentially coupled to uh, uh, all remaining uh, QDITs. So in this example, we first couple uh, them to QDIT three. Uh, and then uh, we couple them to a QDIT4. Uh, and uh, 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 somehow each time we uh, uh, couple, uh, we apply one of these couplings, uh, this can be described by uh, a quantum uh, channel, which is shown here. Uh, so this, uh, uh, this channel takes as input uh, two QDITs, uh, brings in uh, ancillary qubit prepared in a maximally mixed state, then applies uh, a pair of uh, two qubit unitary gates uh, and then projects as an ancillary qubit onto a plus state. And because we, we are doing couplings uh, sequentially, uh, it means that uh, essentially we have to simulate uh, a product uh, of roughly n quantum channels of this form uh, and then uh, 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 compute a suitable uh, matrix element. Uh, and because uh, these channels act on two qubits of constant dimension, we can uh, compute uh, such a product uh, classically in uh, linear time. Uh, yeah, so this gives a classical algorithm for computing uh, quantum mean values for level one uh, QAOA. Uh, and uh, yes, as I said, it means that there is no hope for a quantum advantage uh, and perhaps we should look at uh, higher levels of uh, QAOA. And uh, in the rest of the talk, I will uh, describe what happens for level two. Uh, so uh, again, uh, uh, we want to uh, compute mean value of some two qubit observable on uh, level two variational state. Uh, and uh, so these are our results. Uh, okay, I, I forgot to say that uh, 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 we, we assume that uh, 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 our cost function is defined on some interaction graph. Uh, it means that we can only apply uh, two QDIT gates on nearest neighbor vertices on the interaction graph. Uh, and uh, the runtime of our algorithm depends on, on this interaction graph. Uh, for general graphs, the runtime is exponential. Uh, but it's only two to uh, n over two. Uh, and uh, for comparison, the brute force simulation algorithm would uh, have runtime uh, roughly two to the n. So we have uh, sort of uh, a square root speed up. 
Uh, and uh, in the special case, uh, then uh, interaction graph is planar. Uh, uh, our algorithm has polynomial runtime. Uh, and uh, 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 somehow you could say that uh, Ising uh, model on planar graphs is not very interesting because uh, it can be solved exactly. Uh, but our algorithm also works for generalized Ising model. Uh, then uh, we replace qubits by qubits with a constant dimension. Uh, Sergey, can I ask you a question? So you're saying if the interaction graph is three-dimensional, so you still have a polynomial algorithm? Is that what you were saying? Uh, or not? No. Uh, no. So they only have polynomial algorithm for planar graphs. Okay. okay. Three-dimensional yeah. lattices very non-planar. Uh, yes, so uh, 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 let me try to sketch how this algorithm works. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I apologize for this awkward uh, notations. So I divide the circuit into B layers and uh, C layers. Uh, uh, B layers only include single qubit X rotations, and uh, C layers only include uh, two qubit diagonal gates. Uh, and uh, first, we perform some uh, simple uh, manipulations uh, to simplify uh, this quantum circuit. Uh, uh, so first, we uh, uh, conjugate the observable by the inner pair of B layers. Uh, and uh, uh, this gives some uh, modified to qubit observable O tilde. Uh, then uh, we, uh, we apply the inner pair of C layers. Uh, uh, as before, we can cancel uh, all two QDIT gates that do not touch QDIT one or two. Uh, uh, and then uh, 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 using the fact that all these gates are diagonal, one can show that uh, uh, this uh, middle part of the circuit becomes uh, a linear combination of uh, tensor product observables. And uh, this linear combination has only a constant number of uh, terms. Uh, and uh, uh, this is not entirely obvious, but uh, let me skip uh, the proof. So from now on, uh, I focus on uh, one single term in this linear combination. So this uh, uh, thing in the middle is just uh, a tensor product uh, observable. Or you can also think of it as uh, a product of single qubit uh, unitary gates. Uh, then uh, we apply the inner pair of B layers. So here we only have local gates. So we get some uh, modified uh, tensor product observable uh, P tilde. Uh, and uh, the last step is uh, 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 to express this quantum mean value as uh, the inner product between some computationally tractable uh, states. So I want to play the same game uh, as before. Uh, and so first we need to define uh, these uh, two states, Psi1 and Psi2. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I look at each uh, single QDIT gate in this middle uh, part and uh, assign, sorry, uh, uh, I assign each of these gates either to the left part or to the right part of the circuit such that there are exactly n over two gates uh, on the left and n over two gates on the right. Uh, and then uh, 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 the left part of the circuit defines some state psi one, uh, the right part defines some state psi two, and uh, the quantum mean value is just in a product between psi one and uh, psi two. Uh, now, uh, 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 so why I say that these states are computationally tractable, uh, well, uh, 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 I claim that we can compute any amplitude of the states uh, in time roughly two to n over two. Uh, so we are not uh, tractable, computationally tractable in polynomial sense, but uh, uh, they have some non-trivial, uh, uh, well, they, they have some structure. And uh, so on this picture, I uh, consider state psi one as example. Suppose we want to compute the amplitude of psi one on some uh, basis vector like zero, one, one, zero. Uh, then uh, 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 every, uh, uh, every two qubit uh, diagonal gate that touches uh, a qubit initialized in zero or one state 
uh, can be uh, removed because uh, 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 such gate uh, uh, cannot, uh, basically such gate can be replaced by single-cuded uh, single diagonal gates. It cannot create any uh, entanglement. Uh, so it means that uh, 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 somehow uh, we can essentially uh, 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 ignore one half of all qubits because they cannot be entangled. Uh, uh, and we have to simulate only n over two qubits and this can be done by, uh, uh, say, a state vector simulation or any other uh, algorithm. Uh, and uh, the same is true for the state Psi2. Uh, and then uh, uh, if you use a uh, Vanden Nest algorithm that I showed you in the beginning, uh, the runtime becomes uh, 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 2 to n over 2. Uh, uh, but now uh, suppose uh, uh, our interaction graph is not general, but it's a planar graph. Uh, and then uh, somehow we have a complete freedom in how we uh, uh, choose a partition of qubits to define uh, these uh, two states, Psi1 and uh, Psi2. Uh, and uh, we can ask if uh, we can pick uh, a good partition of qubits such that uh, Psi1 and Psi2 uh, uh, become a weakly entangled state. Uh, uh, and uh, so uh, uh, I will need this uh, graph theoretic uh, results uh, uh, proved by uh, DeVos and others. Uh, and it says that if uh, you give me any planar graph, uh, 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 I can divide the set of vertices into two subsets, V1 and V2. Uh, such that uh, subgraphs are uh, induced by V1 and V2 have uh, very small uh, three widths, uh, three widths at most uh, two. Uh, uh, for example, uh, 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 subgraph, uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so on this picture, I illustrate how to construct these subsets. Uh, so the, uh, 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 we uh, partition uh, vertices of a planar graph into concentric uh, layers, uh, starting from the outer face of the graph and moving uh, towards the center. And then uh, every edge of the graph either connects uh, uh, two vertices uh, at the same layer or uh, connects uh, a pair of vertices uh, at uh, two consecutive layers. Uh, and then uh, we choose a subset V1 uh, to include all, uh, say, all uh, odd layers. Uh, so then the subgraph induced by V1 uh, only include edges that connect uh, uh, pairs of vertices in V1. And this subgraph is uh, 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 basically a, a union of uh, path graphs and uh, cycle graphs, or, or uh, more generally, we may have uh, uh, outer planar graphs. And the same true is for subgraph uh, induced by a subset V2. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, now suppose again, we want to compute uh, some amplitude of uh, this uh, state Psi1. Uh, and uh, 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 so uh, 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 if you look at some uh, two qubit gate that touches a qubit in the subset V2, uh, uh, such gate uh, uh, disappears because uh, this qubit is projected onto zero or one state. Uh, so uh, uh, it means that uh, 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 the only two qubit gates that can potentially create entanglement are, are those uh, associated with uh, edges uh, of this uh, subgraph induced by V1. Uh, and because uh, 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 yeah, so this means that amplitudes of uh, Psi1 are defined by a tensor network defined on this uh, graph, this uh, very small three bits. Uh, and we can compute uh, amplitudes of Psi1 by uh, contracting this uh, tensor network uh, using the standard uh, algorithm by uh, Markov and Xi. Uh, and of course, the same is true for the state uh, Psi2. Uh, yeah, so uh, just to summarize, uh, we obtain a polynomial time a classical algorithm for uh, approximating uh, uh, quantum mean values of a uh, uh, few qubit observables for uh, level two uh, QA, QA or A states uh, uh, defined on planar uh, graphs. 
uh, and uh, 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 somehow a nice property of uh, 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 variable elimination and uh, recursive uh, QAOA is that uh, it preserves uh, planarity. So uh, say if we have a pair of nearest neighbor variables uh, A and B, and we eliminate uh, variable B, uh, it, uh, uh, it means that we contract uh, 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 an edge of the graph connecting A and B. And uh, edge contraction uh, maps planar graphs to uh, planar graphs. So if we start from a planar graph, uh, uh, then uh, uh, each step of recursive QAOA uh, generates uh, a planar graph. Uh, so, uh, so we can use this algorithm to do classical simulation of uh, level two uh, RQAOA uh, for cost function uh, for any cost function defined on planar graph. Uh, yes, and uh, this is uh, pretty much all uh, I had to say. Uh, mm, yes, yeah, so there are some interesting uh, open problems. Uh, uh, it is. Uh, uh, it would be very interesting to establish some uh, 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 hardness results for approximating uh, quantum mean values. Uh, 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 say in the case of low depth quantum circuits or uh, low level QAOA states. Uh, and uh, it would be nice to establish some rigorous bounds on the performance of RQAOA. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, consider some more general uh, uh, strategies for variable uh, elimination. Uh, yes, and uh, thank you for attention. Okay, thank you, Sergey, for a very nice talk. I'm sure there are many questions. Um, I'm looking at Fari has a question here. I don't know if Ed now can speak up because I tried to change him. Ed, can you say something? I think his microphone is turned off, but otherwise no, he, looks, no. he looks online. We can hear you. Can I be heard? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Sergey, another beautiful talk from you. Thank you so much. Hi, Eddie. Hi. I do want to say something about P equals one and P equals two QAOA. I mean, it's really not terribly surprising that it's very low depth, the algorithm will not work well because if you look at the light cone or of a, if you look at uh, the cost function, which is a sum of terms, and then you conjugate the terms with the unitary operator that involves the evolution. If you're on a bounded degree graph, the uh, number of qubits that each term sees is far fewer than all the qubits. And we always knew that you would have to have that light cone extent to the whole graph in order for there to be the possibility of algorithmic success. And I think Sergey's result, which with his collaborators, which will be discussed later today, is an example of that. And I have a recent paper with Gamarnik and Gutman showing that uh, for maximum independent set, if uh, the depth is less than a constant times log n, that the QAOA will fail. Uh, on typical instances randomly generated. But once the depth is a, a log n, you know, then you see the whole graph and there's no indication the algorithm will fail. And I think, you know, like this, I think we need to move beyond constant depth and just, real, but log n may be enough. And I think we really need to start focusing on that. And in ter practical terms, if you look at the paper by uh, Sergey and um, his collaborators, it's also a log n result, but at 2 million qubits, it only shows the algorithm fails at p equals one. And right. I think we should be cognizant of that, that, um, you know, uh, showing, uh, and, and our results uh, only show the algorithm fails at p equals set of six at a million qubits on three regular graphs. And, you know, log n is very forgiving because, you know, a million qubits, logarithm is not very much. And we may have a NISC device where log n is easy to achieve. So I think we really need to get our, wrap our heads around that, that, you know, constant depth is, it's really interesting. It's nice to show things, but, you know, uh, you gotta go to log n. 
Yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree. Uh, uh, but one comment is that we, we should distinguish between a constant uh, depth and a constant level of QAOA. Uh, uh, because yeah. uh, if you look at this recursive algorithm that I described, yeah. it uh, basically, even if you start from degree three graph, uh, each variable elimination step uh, add, uh, adds more edges to the graph. So uh, the degree of the graph would, would grow and you quickly end up with a, a, a dense graph. So each qubit can see any other qubit. Okay. Even for level one uh, version of the algorithm. Okay. So it's like well, one option is to increase the depth uh, or uh, another option is to look at a recursive version of uh, the algorithm. Right, or else the other thing to do is to look at uh, graphs which are complete. And we wrote a paper on the Sherrington Kirkpatrick model where you have a complete graph and if P equals one, you see the whole graph and we have nice results on that. Um, I wish we could continue this discussion, but um, and, and maybe if other people have questions to Sergey, they can put them in the Q&A. We will also have a few minute break before we have the next talk. Uh, let's thank Sergey again. Thank you.